What is up guys, welcome back to the Weaves Closet, and I'm doing something that I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time. As you can see, I am a bit of a, uh, a bit of a fan of The Legend of Zelda, just a little bit. This is, this is a video I've wanted to make since I started playing the series. If you've watched some of our content over the last few weeks, you might have noticed there's been some Zelda videos in there. YouTube doesn't really like when we do gaming content, it doesn't really recommend it to anybody, so... We're kind of talking about just making a gaming channel so that when we want to uh, vom word vomit about Zelda and Final Fantasy and stuff, we can just do it on that channel. Hopefully the algorithm recognizes that a bit more, but that does not make me want to stop from ranking every single Legend of Zelda game. That is that is right, all 20 mainline Legend of Zelda games. I've wanted to do this for so many years, um, but really this year I kind of finished up a few games that I had never played. Well, okay, I want to I want to be transparent. There's still two that I haven't beaten yet. Um, and spoilers, those are going to be, you know, at the at the end of the list. Um, and it's not because I haven't finished them. It's just because I didn't finish them. So I'm not, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of them. Um, but yeah, as you can see, bit of a fan. Got the swag on. Got the merch. Got the uh, the tattoo to prove it as well and tears of the kingdom just came out i've never been so excited for anything in my entire life so that was that was a transcendent experience right there and i just beat it earlier today it was everything that i wanted it to be let's just get it going at number 20 that's right there are 20 of these things and at number 20 i'm going to put okay i got the game right here four swords adventures um, this is one of the ones that I just couldn't get through one day, like probably when they announce the next Zelda, I will have to, um, buckle down, finish all the ones that I haven't. Spoilers, 20, 19, and 18 are all multiplayer games. I have yet to see multiplayer work very well in Zelda. I'm going to be honest though, I've never actually used a multiplayer feature in these games because I don't have any friends. Um... That, that, that is a lie. I do have a couple of friends, and they do play Zelda. I, I've just never played a Zelda multiplayer game with my friends who play Zelda. Don't know why. Probably because they're not the best games. I'm just not the biggest fan of this game. I think the puzzles, the multiplayer aspect doesn't really complement the puzzles. The game doesn't have the same structure as some of the other games. I wasn't inv as invested in the story. Visually, it's just okay. It kind of feels a little bit lifeless. Um, and... Like, I'm going to be honest, this is going to be a long video because of the games I'm going to talk about later, but I'm not going to spend too much time on this because we got to get to the later ones. All right, I had to run to my room to get this one because I forgot it. That's how forgettable it is at number 19. <laughs> Triforce Heroes, another multiplayer. This one, uh, the reason it's above Four Swords Adventures is because it actually feels like they tried to do something here. Like, Brezzo actually... Tried to do something a little bit unique. I've had this copy for like five years now, and I just got around to playing it this year, and I kind of see what the complaints are. I like that each Link is a bit unique. You can customize them with really cool outfits. I like the whole, uh, whatever the, the town is called, uh, what, what, what is it, uh, Hytopia, I think it's called? Yeah, Hytopia. How it's all about fashion, which I think that idea was kind of carried over in Tears of the Kingdom with Hateno. I don't really know. Um... It's just tedious. If you're playing it solo, this is tedium the game right here. I I could see this game being a lot more fun if you do play it with friends. Even my friends that do play Zelda, I don't even know if they still have a 3DS, and I just, after Tears of the Kingdom, I don't see any of them wanting to go back to play this. I absolutely would. Um, it's just slightly better Four Swords Adventures. And to top off our multiplayer Zelda, Right here, I don't know if you can see it. We got four swords, just just four swords, not four swords adventures. This is the Link to the Past plus four swords cartridge right here. Why four swords over four swords adventures and Triforce Heroes? Well, the version I played wasn't exactly uh, four swords. It was the DSi anniversary four swords where you don't have to play multiplayer. Granted, you still have another Link with you, but that, the game is kind of complemented around just you and one other Link. You're not always paired up 
like in Four Swords Adventures, you, you, you know, it's not as tedious as Triforce Heroes. It's mission-based, which, yeah, the other two games are mission-based, but I feel like you're just constantly in and out in this game. Um, Story-wise, it's, it's, it's nothing special. I, I, I can't really speak on the original uh, GBA version of the game because you have to play with somebody else with a Game Boy Advance and one of those, like, multiplayer pack cables and I just don't know anybody that uh, that has those facilities. Okay, we're actually getting to the real games now. At number 17, I got Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. We're officially in the games that I enjoy to some degree. This one is a bit... I feel like I put off playing this game for so long. I actually have a bit of a story. Back in 2018 when they did the re-release of the NES Classic, I got up like 9 a.m., went straight to GameStop to pick up the NES Classic. I was dating a girl at the time, and I was just like, yo, I'm gonna play Zelda 2. I gotta freaking finally play Zelda 2. You can come over and hang out, but just know that that is what I'm going to be doing, and she absolutely guilt tripped me the entire day. But I still had a really good time playing this game. I just love hopping back on like super ultra retro games and just seeing what they were all about, and this is just. Nintendo didn't know how to do sequels during the NES era. Like, let's be real. Super Mario Bros. 2, Castlevania 2, like, that was an RPG. This was an RPG. One of the worst progression systems I've ever seen in a game. Uh, just had no idea how to traverse, like, Death Mountain. The palaces got way too convoluted. But there's a lot of really novel ideas in Zelda 2 that I really like. I like that... Whenever you're walking on the path, you can't actually be attacked by monsters, so you kind of got to be strategic about where you walk. I would really like to see... Okay, during the PlayStation Showcase, they showed Cat Quest, like how you kind of roam um, as the cat in the overworld. I would absolutely love to see a Zelda 2 remake in that vein. Um, there are some really cool, unique boss fights in the game, and I think the backstory of the game is also really cool. I love the soundtrack for being as old as it is. Um, a weird follow-up, but not a bad one. I would absolutely play a remake, and I think if I had a Zelda game that I wanted to be remade more than anything, I think it's this one because Miyamoto, the rest of the Zelda team that worked on this, they're, I know that they don't like this game. And it's for good reason, but I think there is a lot of good stuff in here. All right, I'm going to speed through these as fast as I can. Zelda, Phantom Hourglass, a follow-up to Wind Waker, but not really a follow-up to Wind Waker. Wind Waker has one of the best stories in all of Zelda, and this just is completely has nothing to do with it. It's just a little fun side adventure, a neat little idea on the DS, but I think it has been somewhat outdone. We'll, we'll get to that game a little bit later. Um, people are in denial about this game. This is not the superior uh, Zelda DS game. Riding on the boat is just no fun. Uh, killing enemies on the boat is tedious. The controls with the little stylus just aren't as intuitive as I think Nintendo thought they would be. You're constantly going back to the same dungeons over and over. I think the only, the only thing I really love about this game is that it takes place in the world of Wind Waker. I love the characters. The story is fun enough. Uh, soundtrack's all right. Um, it's it's a it's a Zelda game. It is a DS Zelda game. All right, and next up, the only Zelda game that I do not own physically, and I'm very ashamed of it because a few years ago I was at a retro uh, convention for gaming, and someone offered it to me for like 15 bucks, and now it's like 70 dollars, and that is the Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. Um, so what about this game do I like more than Phantom Hourglass? Well, for starters, um, the story is just way better. You can actually enjoy the story as its own standalone Zelda. We establish new Hyrule. Princess Zelda is actually one of the best companions. Whenever people mention companions, she is always forgotten, like Phantom Zelda. She dies at, like, the beginning of the game, and then she's just a ghost that can possess you know, the phantom soldiers uh, and become like, well, you know what I'm fucking talking about. And controlling her as well as Link was way more intuitive, way more fun and complex. You could get more creative with the puzzles than just what they did in Phantom Hourglass. Also, the fucking train, way better than riding around on the boat. I love being the train conductor, doing the little horn and getting the cannon on there. 
Absolutely love it. The soundtrack also, it might be like, it's definitely top 10. The overworld theme is, it's a little like remix of the Dragon Roost Island theme from Wind Waker. And it just goes so hard. If you listen to the 25th anniversary uh, orchestra that they did back, you know, in 2011, I think it was, they do a rendition of the Spirit Tracks theme. It is just so freaking good. And I've kind of, you know, got a little soft spot in my heart for Spirit Tracks just because it's so, it's forgotten way more than Phantom Hourglass, I feel like, but I feel like it's way better. Not, not way better, because it's only one spot higher, but for a DS Zelda game, I think it's pretty good. Next up, I actually have one of the games in my GBA. So how about that? I was playing it right before Tears of the Kingdom came out, and I'm just going to put them back to back at 14 and 13. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages and Seasons. Which one do I like more? Which one do I like less? I don't know. I feel like a lot of people prefer Ages because it's more puzzle heavy and Seasons is more action heavy. I gotta be honest, I just beat Seasons. I beat Ages like a long time ago. I don't know what took me so long to get around to Seasons. I just beat Seasons. I might like it a little bit more. I know that's kind of controversial, but I don't get the it's more action heavy than Ages because I feel like I got lost just as much in Seasons as I did in Ages. Um, but there was so much that I liked in, in Seasons. I like that basically the entire first dungeon is just a remake of the first dungeon from Zelda 1. There's a lot of Zelda 1 references in Oracle of Seasons. I feel like I like the map a little bit more. Um, I'm just gonna throw them together because I don't know how to rank them. So yeah, 14, 13, both Oracle games. Um, they're coming to Switch. I feel like I would really like a Link's Awakening remake style for both of these games. I love the fact that you can carry over progress from one game to another. I freaking hate playing these on the GBA where you got two buttons, um, and they don't even belong on the GBA. They belong on the color where you don't even have these, the, 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 the pads on top, the little buttons on top, but you don't use those anyway. Switching in and out in your inventory every time you need to rotate an item is just... No, it's it's let it die in the 90s. It belongs in the 90s. It's, it's my fault. I'm still playing these games. If I had to pick one I like more, I mean, just seasons kind of stuck with me a little bit more. But you ask me tomorrow, I might say ages. I just feel like they're they are a bit similar. I also, I mean, seasons had a complete alternate map that you could go to. What was it called? The like the sub the sub -sor or whatever, where they had that. Have they popped up in any other Zelda game? I can't remember, but um, it was really cool that it had an alternate map. I love like switching between the seasons and that it affected the map in a new way. Of course, in Ages, you travel between the, the present and the past, um, and that also affects the world in a really cool way. Um, just really neat games, just completely held back by you know the time they came out in. All right, this one's really gonna hurt, but at number 12, a game I actually just beat this year. I've played it on and off so much. Um, I couldn't really get through it because it is, is very linear, and that is Skyward Sword. <laughs> number 12 probably feels really low. By the way, um, some of your favorite games, like Zelda-related games, are going to be pretty low on this list. I know it's gonna happen to one person if you're watching this, and I just gotta say, once we get to like top 10, we're talking like some of my favorite games of all time. So if your favorite's at like eight or nine, it's still one of my favorite games of all time. And Skyward Sword is no different, just beat it. I really liked it. I would even say that I loved it. I absolutely love the story. I absolutely love the soundtrack, one of the best soundtracks. Um, one of my favorite Links, one of my favorite Zeldas, Groose is absolutely one of the best characters in the entire series. Girahim is such a great villain. Fi um, is a great character. I don't think she works super well as a companion, but I still really appreciated her. I love the world. Um, and fuck, like even the motion controls don't bother me, I feel like, as much as other people. And if you played on Switch, um, which I started playing it on, we could never get through it, but I played it on Switch and it just looks so good. It runs so good. It sounds so good. The puzzles are awesome. My problem with Skyward Sword is the just the entire gameplay loop you and i was watching reddit oscar i don't know if any of you watch reddit oscar on youtube i highly recommend him he's more like analytical uh does like video essays and theory videos about just whatever whatever he feels like talking about he's mostly talking about zelda he did like elden ring prior to zelda he said exactly what i've always complained about with skyward sword which is Skyward Sword just kind of feels like one long 
string of puzzles. Getting to the start of where you will get to a dungeon where you'll finally solve the dungeon. It's all, it's, it's just puzzles on puzzles on puzzles. You got to use an item to get to this place that'll then lead you to a mission that will then lead you to the, to the dungeon. Where in other, other games, it was more about discovering the dungeon and then doing it. You know, there wasn't this huge lead up to the dungeon, which kind of like, there needs to be a little bit of, uh, of a break between dungeon and and then, you know, a little bit of story, a little bit of action, maybe go back and to, you know, the main hub and kind of take care of some stuff. But And you could do that, but really there wasn't a lot to do on Skyloft, like, like right outside of Skyloft. If you go to Skyloft, it's awesome. There's side quests to do. You can, you know, go to the bazaar and repair your weapons, get new stuff and whatnot, and potions. That's all cool. But outside on like the other Sky Islands, all there was was like chests and a few mini games and maybe one side quest here. It was a bit empty. So flying around on your loft wing in the sky kind of got stale after like five hours. I hate to say it. If it's not my favorite Zelda story, it's definitely in the top three. I just think it was so good at setting up the lore for the Zelda series and it kind of this is kind of like that 2011 to like 2017 16 17 era where like I felt like Nintendo was they actually cared about the lore it felt like and this just really a lot of people might say it made it the timeline more convoluted but it gave me more of a reason to care about the series as a whole um, Zelda and Link, their relationship is just awesome. I love the character development of Groose. Uh, Demise is definitely not the strongest character as like a, for a villain, but it gets carried over to Ganondorf, which just it just created such a great momentum for the series that every time Link, Ganondorf, and Zelda have a, a uh, interaction, it just has so much weight because there's thousands of years uh, of history behind those characters. Okay, I actually lied. I don't have the physical cartridge for Minish Cap either. This is also a game, I think I played Minish Cap like right after Breath of the Wild came out. Never beat it, had to look up like, I hate looking shit up. If I have to look up how to play a game, I get so, I get so pissed off um, because I just want to solve stuff on my own. And I feel like if you give in to looking one thing up, it's just, you've opened Pandora's box. So I kind of gave up on Minish Cap because I felt like the whole game revolved around going to a specific location and shrinking and finding a way to progress and so I kind of gave up on the game I didn't really go back to it then they dropped it on NSO on Nintendo Switch and I didn't I wasn't working that week I can't remember why so I just said you know I'll, I'll give Minish Cap another try and it was it was you know as good as people say it was um, I love the Ken Stones I know people complain about those but there's something so satisfying about Finding somebody that is just your perfect match. They have just the piece you're looking for. Most of the time, the rewards weren't that good, um, but it was still a really cool feature. It, the pacing was just, like, off the charts. When I played it that second time on NSO, like, you know, I initially played it in, like, 2017, 2018, and then playing it uh, now, this year, it just flowed so well. For some reason, everything clicked. I think it's just because I played so many Zelda games that I was able to just piece everything together. Holy shit. Vati was not messing around at the end of <laughs> at the end of the game definitely i think that is the second hardest is the second hardest i think it's i wouldn't say it's second hard it's not nes hard it's the hardest final boss outside of the nes zeldas like for sure i was absolutely struggling the whole game is a cakewalk up until the very end um technically like the second game and the timeline Love the Minish, uh, or the Pecori, or whatever. Love the whole setup with the festival. This is still, like, super early Zelda, where, like, there's no Ganondorf yet. Unless, you know, Tears of the Kingdom. I, I still don't really know where the past part of that game takes place, but whatever. I had to sneak it in in the top ten. It's still a game that I really enjoy. I played this very early on in my zelda enjoying career um and i spent about six hours because i told you guys i hate looking shit up you cannot beat this game without a guide i challenge anybody to beat this game without a guide that hasn't already beaten it and like hasn't doesn't know anything about the game i think i think personally it's impossible um even still today i have to look up a map like an actual map and then usually a layout of all the dungeons um and then i can find the secrets on my own but uh again this game when you have somewhat of a guide, you can kind of see what Nintendo was going for with their go anywhere, do anything. This was really, I think, probably 
If it's not the most influential game ever made, it's definitely one of. I know we had an adventure on the Atari, but I feel like this was the first, like, truly open world uh, game. It also created the save feature. Still really fun to play. I just watched Maximilian Dude play it for the first time. That was also a lot of fun. Um, it's just not super accessible. That's the only thing holding this back. I don't think the graphics are so ugly that you can't play it. I think it still holds up pretty well for an NES game. It's just the cryptic nature of the game. Having, you know, a candle that you can only light once per screen, and then you gotta, you know, burn 28 bushes. When I was playing the game for the first time, I didn't even know you could burn bushes. Whenever I saw a guide of people doing that, I would never, never would have thought of that. Never would have thought of that. Bombing random parts of the map to go inside caves to get heart pieces and go into dungeons. Um, it's, yeah, it requires the manual for sure and probably a nintendo hotline do they have the number on here um i don't think so all right this is where everyone gets mad at me at number nine a game i absolutely love legend of zelda twilight princess um i will say when i first played it it probably would have been a bit lower because it was on the wii i don't know what rubbed me the wrong way the first time i played this game and i don't know what made me love the game the second time i played it but I think this is when Linear Zelda was kind of starting to show its head a little bit. There are a ton of dungeons in this game, and you are just in rapid succession going and going and going. I don't really want to talk about my first experience with the game, because I think I was just in a bad mood. But when I played it, I was like, okay, I'm never touching that one again. But I did. I got the HD uh, remaster of it, and it's... I used to get so triggered whenever people would do like a top 10 Zelda list or they would talk about their favorites and they would be like, oh, Twilight Princess, my favorite Zelda. It's just so epic. And then they'd show the clip of Link riding a pony and his sword is up. You know, they, it's just so epic. You don't know, it's so edgy. It's so mature. Um, I don't, I didn't really give a fuck. I just wanted the game to be good. Um, but it is, it is. It is really a great game when you step back and, and look at it by far and like i'm glad this isn't a music like an ost ranking because this list would be very different but this is the goat like twilight princess the absolute goat listen to this soundtrack more than any other zelda soundtrack and that's a, that's a big deal for me because i think zelda music is the best music in the world so i'm kind of saying that this is like the best soundtrack of all time also i can't believe it's at number nine and i'm saying this best dungeons like not even close i think twilight princess absolutely is the best dungeons my favorite dungeon maybe in any zelda game would be the like the yeti snow palace where you go to the that that monster's mansion and you're just going through his house you know getting the pumpkin soup like feeding his wife um that's where you get like the big ball and chain i absolutely love that dungeon you got the the sky temple where you get the the dual claw shot uh, Arbiter's Grounds, holy shit, Arbiter's Grounds is so good. I love the Water Temple, I love the Farron Woods Temple, the one you start out with. It's just banger after banger after banger. I think this is also one of the best Ganon's Castle. I think Ganon's Castles, they're always, they're always just not great because they're just like a remix of all the dungeons you've done previously. But I feel like this game, it was actually a bit challenging. Also, the Ganondorf fight, holy shit. You fight evil Zelda at the beginning. Uh, the, the huge plot twist with, with Midna, Midna. I mean, best companion, everybody knows it, you know it, I know it. Uh, the Twilight Realm, Wolf Link, I mean, every Zelda game needs their gimmick. I feel like Wolf Link was such a great one for this game. I just, I, I can never stop poking fun at people that love this game over all the other ones, because I do feel like there's a bit of that, like, I was 12 when I played this and I felt so edgy. Um, but I don't really care about that stuff, because, I mean... I feel like this and Wind Waker were the tale of two cities. They were two sides of the same coin. One was very uh, kid-friendly, cutesy, and this is edgy, mature. They both feel very similar from like a gameplay loop aspect, going from dungeon to dungeon, and uh, just the way the combat feels. But holy shit, like also co the combat outside of Breath of the Wild is awesome in this game. Learning the moves from uh, the hero shade or whatever, which is, you know, kind of the hero of time, which is pretty cool. It goes pretty in depth. There were things on my second and third playthrough, actually, I played this three times now, that 
I just really began to appreciate King Bulblin. I could go, yeah, I could go on and on about this game. I'm gushing about it like it's a lot higher, I know. This is just how strong the series is, that a game I love so much is only the ninth best game in the series. It's like, yeah, the whole relationship with King Bulblin and, uh, and Link, just how he's fighting for Ganondorf and then Link bests him in combat, so he kind of like switches sides. Also, best Zelda design, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't know if I'd put any other above it. I don't know, there's just a lot to like about this game. I apologize to everybody that loves this game over the other ones. Um, I just like the other ones better. All right, as you guys are able to tell, there's like three 2D Zelda games left, and these were so hard to rank because I feel like I'm very nostalgic about one, I feel like one of them does what I ask Zelda games to do, and then I feel like one is just an absolute classic. And so I feel like no matter how I rank these, I'm gonna piss somebody off. At number eight, I gotta give the spot to A Link Between Worlds. And you know what? I'm just gonna bring up A Link to the Past. I got the cartridge right here. I don't have it on Super Nintendo. I'm not rich. I don't have a Super Nintendo collection. I wanna talk about these games back to back. I'm gonna put A Link Between Worlds at number eight and A Link to the Past at number seven um, because I feel like they're so close, but they both do things that I like, but not the same things, if that makes sense. I feel like A Link Between Worlds, what I really like about this game is I feel like it has a much stronger story. The whole dilemma with uh, low rule is a lot more interesting than I think the kind of dark world sacred realm that Ganon had built in A Link to the Past. The whole story with Hilda and the plot twist with Ravio that he's kind of like low rules Link. I feel like there was a lot of character development there. I really like the cutscenes. The animation was like super expressive. Great soundtrack. But what it does that I love so much is that non-linearity. You can just go to absolutely any dungeon you want because you can rent the items from Ravio, but this kind of brings up the things that I like more in A Link to the Past. Giving the player, which if you farm rupees very early on in the game, you can just get every item before you really get into the game. Giving the player all the items at the beginning of the game is, uh, it kind of makes the dungeons less exciting. There was less rewards in these dungeons. I felt like the dungeons in A Link to the Past had a little bit more to offer. And also, I feel like the challenge just is not there, which wouldn't really be a complaint. I don't really care. But the reason that it sucks is because you can rent items in A Link, to, uh, in a Link Between Worlds, and when you die, your items go back to Ravio, and you gotta either rent them or you can buy them and keep them permanently even when you die. But you're not really gonna die in this game, and so... There's really, like, you're just gonna unlock the items. Progression is kinda gonna just die out besides just collecting hearts and maybe expanding your, your uh, like, purple magic a little bit more. And so that's kind of where the things that I like about Link Between Worlds end and the things that I like about A Link to the Past begin because I really, really dig the challenge of this. It hits that perfect, perfect, like, Zelda 2D difficulty where, like, everything feels manageable but it's very challenging especially when you get to the ice temple it's like the worst shit ever because you're slipping and slapping all over the place um but the further you get in the game the harder things hit and i didn't really feel that only between worlds i felt like you know whenever i got hit two hearts gone whenever you get hit and late game a link to the past even if you have like the chain mail the like red chain mail or whatever um it's still gonna take a chunk of your health off dude like it was really challenging. Um, I I think there are a ton of tracks in A Link to the Past that have stuck with me, like music-wise, which is why I would put this game a little bit over. I really like the challenge. I like the dungeons a little bit more. I just like the art style and like that that retro feel of A Link to the Past a little bit more. And it just it did it first. It did A Link Between Worlds before A Link Between Worlds, so it earns the spot above it. Next up. This game was a lot higher originally on the list like a few years ago, but before Tears of the Kingdom came out, I went back and did a second playthrough of this game. I would say I've played most 3D Zeldas three or four times. This one I never really went back to and I couldn't put my finger on why, but I think what makes this such a great game is also kind of a detriment to it, which is the time system. I really absolutely love this game on my first playthrough, but let me let me just give an example. I really wanted to get the like upgraded sword in this game, not like the level one, but like the the gold and silver like level two where it like never breaks. I wanted that sword, 
So what do you gotta do? Well, I beat the Goron dungeon in this game, and I didn't have enough time to get the sword. So what I had to do was, I had to go back in time, lose all my resources, start back at the day one, and then I had to go to the blacksmith so he could give me the level one sword, because then I gotta go back and give him the level two. Oh wait, I can't, because his, you know, the forge is covered in ice, so I gotta go up, go to the hot springs, it's like a five minute climb up, scoop up some hot spring water, go back down, pour it on, I, I can give him the sword at that point, but I have to wait a day and come back to pick up the, the level one sword. So I got to come back on the second day. Okay. So I come back on the second day, I pick up the sword. So I've just wasted like 20 minutes of my life. I know you can fast forward, but still, you, you know, going up and down, getting the hot spring water. You're wasting so much time. Get in the hot spring water. Um, and then I get the sword. So now I need to get the level two sword. So what do I need for the level two sword? I need that like gold dust. But how do you win the gold dust? You gotta do the Goron race, but how do you do the Goron race? Well, you gotta, you know, blow, you gotta uh, melt the ice that's covering up the track. So you gotta go back up, get the hot spring water, go back down, takes like 10 minutes, pour it on the, the fucking thing, and then go inside. Oh wait, nobody's there because you haven't beaten the boss yet. I beat the dungeon, but I went back in time, so he's not beaten yet, so I gotta go back up to the Goron dungeon, and I gotta beat the boss. So I beat the boss, okay, cool. So I go back down, go to the Goron race, everybody's there, everybody's happy, everybody's waiting for me to do, to do the Goron race. So I do the Goron race, I lose, whatever. Do it again, I lose, whatever. I'm wasting time, I'm about to have to reverse time and do this all over again. Finally win on like the third try, get the gold dust, go back, gotta wait a day to get the sword, get the sword, now I have it permanently. Fuck. This is not the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. <laughs> this is the Legend of Tedium Majora's Mask. Now... I will say, that is what makes Majora's Mask work, is the tedium, is the repetition. Because this game is all, of, like, the, the music in this game. I'm just going to play it real quick. You know how like, <laughs> you know how like IGN be like, you know, oh, and when you play Spider-Man, you really feel like Spider-Man. It makes you feel like when you play Jedi Survivor, I feel like a Jedi. When I play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, I feel insane. They really do a good job of making you feel like you are just losing your mind in this world of Termina. And that is kind of like part of it. It's that, it's that descent into madness. That's kind of what I like about it, though, is it's like, oh my gosh, I have to do this, like, just driving yourself mad. And I think they built it that way because there's only, like, four dungeons, so the game does really good at keeping you busy. Still probably the best side quest also in any Zelda game, which is very high praise. And I just love that this was a continuation, in a way, of Ocarina of Time. The Hero of Time is one of my favorite links, and so it was cool that we have an, an adventure as him where he's just a kid, and he has to take on this weird demonic problem that's going to destroy the world. Uh, one of the better final bosses, also I think Majora is a lot stronger than uh, a lot of people give him credit for. Also, the time mechanic wasn't... It wasn't the only thing that made this game special. I do think being able to transform into a Deku Scrub, into uh, the Zora, the Goron, the like weird stone statue thing, um, that is what is at the heart and soul of the game. But I just, I need a remake. I need a fucking remake where you just put on the mask, boom, you're the race, don't have to even skip the cutscene, just go. Just I just want a remake where I can just go, 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 do all the things, give me a, an ability where I can jump up and get the hot spring water like 100 feet up. I don't want to have to climb that stupid thing with the mask of truth or the the, the, the scope of truth or whatever. Um, a lot of tedious stuff. Not the best dungeons either, in my opinion. They're just okay. There's four of them. Um, but that's not really the focus. What makes Majora's Mask work is the world, the transformation in each races. The story is fucking dark. It's the darkest Zelda game still. Way over Twilight Princess. Do not have me. Um, because... Twilight Princess kind of feels like a Tim Burton movie. This feels like a fucked up, like, Stanley Kubrick movie. That's the only way I can put it, especially with the evil-ass moon coming down to crash, the fucking music, where you're just... Every every day, it just gets a little bit faster, and then you get to the final six hours where it's just, like, doom and destruction. Love it. Ah, oh, man, it hurts putting it six. I would have put it in the top three, but I had to move it down because new games came out and kind of replayed it, didn't love it as much. 
still one of the best games of all time. Let's be real. If this is your favorite Zelda game, go. Go you. I agree with you. They're all the best. My favorite 2D Zelda. Um, and I have the Game Boy cartridge right here. This is how I originally played it. Link's Awakening, this is a game that has absolutely grown on me way more than any of the other Zelda games. Uh, I loved it when I played it on GBA, or uh, Game Boy. I did play it on GBA, but that's not technically a GBA game. When this game was described to me, it sounded like a novel idea, but when you play it, it just, it hits different. If you really, like, pay attention to the characters and their aspirations and... Oh my god, the soundtrack is so good. Like, holy shit, dude. I talked about it on the little podcast episode we did, so go check that out. But this was... When I when I beat Link's Awakening, um, it quickly became what I call my dream remake. I wanted, a, I wanted a remake of this game so bad, and when they announced it, it was like, it was like somebody... It was like God was listening to me or something. And the remake was as good, because I wanted it to be in the same style as A Link Between Worlds, and it kind of is. It is a new art style, but... It just kept everything that made the original great, and it just looks so much better, it sounds so much better. Um, but it plays like a retro game. You can't spin in 360, it's still like the eight directions, which some people might not like. Um, I still really appreciate it. The character, the art style is just... I think we pa surpassed Wind Waker with this. I'm not ready to say goodbye to it, and that's kind of why I want them to remake the Oracle games. Um, also, just one of the best stories. You know how your English teacher always told you, you know, don't don't make the end of your story it was all a dream? I feel like it works here. And I feel like it works because you know the twist before it's going to happen. And so you're kind of dreading Link waking up. You're, you're dreading him waking up the windfish and him finding himself on the ocean and Koha Lin is just uh, gone. And you have that true ending where Marin, who is... Best girl, in my opinion, in the entire series. There is no argument. I even have my little pixelated moment right here where they're together looking out onto the beach. Um, she kind of lives on as being a seagull because that's what she talked about when she was talking to Link. And I, Oh my gosh, it's so... It kind of is like lighthearted Majora's Mask where it has really dark tones, but it's covered up by this super lighthearted tone, like over the, the, the actual tone contradicts the undertone definitely the most well-paced linear zelda game if that makes sense fuck dude i love this game i absolutely love it um i had to put it i had a link to the past above this for years but after the remake after playing i've beaten this probably like seven times i think not just the remake i'm talking about also the original and i i've never i don't think i've ever played a game that much i think i've played this game more than any other game and it's just because it's so well-paced I love the story so much. I love the soundtrack so much. I just love how the game feels. I love unlocking the items and the dungeons. I love the dungeons themselves. I think this has the hardest dungeon in the entire series, which is the Eagle Tower, where you have to throw the boulder at the pillars and break them. Um, I played it like, yeah, like seven times, and I still can't wrap my brain around that. I love Marin as a love interest for Link. I love Koholint, you know, Animal Village, Mabe Village. I love the Easter eggs with the Mario stuff. There's nothing I don't like about this game. I think it's... This is one of those games where... I, oh, shit. This is one of those games where I wouldn't change a single thing about it. I think it's just that good. Some of you might know that Breath of the Wild was the first Zelda game I ever beat. And when I beat it, I just wanted to play more. And one day, I went into a little store called Movie Trading Company and found this for $17.99. Zelda Wind Waker HD. And it was just as great. This, I kind of knew a little bit about this game and how people kind of turned against it because you had that like Space World showcase or whatever where Nintendo back in 2001 or something showed off a much darker, more mature Zelda that they were going to start working on in the Game Boy. And then we got Wind Waker, you know, uh, Toon Link, Toon Zelda, these cutesy art styles and whatnot. And it turns out that this game was more badass than this game. And don't at me in the comments. This is this is just facts. I feel like a grown ass man whenever I play this game. I'm gonna keep it brief with Wind Waker because I feel like I've been talking for a really long time and there's really not much more I can add to this one and the next game I'm gonna talk about. But uh, it was like, I think this is the best sequel, if that makes sense. It follows up Ocarina of Time in a way that no other Zelda game has followed up their pre uh, predecessor because if you New Game Plus this game, which I finally did that, I I never New Game Plus it because, it, is that a term? Like a verb? 
um, because I didn't really want to wear like the, the blue getup, even though I really like it. I always really like Link's design with the green tunic. But apparently there's a lot of uh, Hylian dialogue that you can't read that gets uncovered if you do New Game Plus. And they, the King of the Red Lines was talking about the Hero of Time and how they're searching for him. And then you go to Hyrule Castle and there's a statue of the uh, Hero of Time. And then you go into the throne room and there's the Six Sages, Rauru and Darunia and, and Saria and Empa's there. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is like a direct sequel. Like they're actually referencing it. Unlike another game I'm about to talk about, but <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit better about that. But it's so funny that this isn't really a sequel, and yet it's a better sequel than a lot of the sequels in Zelda. Graphics, amazing, will hold up for the rest of time. Gameplay is super smooth. I really like the dungeons. A lot of people say it's the low point in terms of 3D dungeons in the Zelda series. Um, I think they are satisfactory, and then... At the end, you have probably the best boss fight of all time with Puppet Ganon leading up to being on top of the tower. He's got the dual swords. So fucking cool. This is for badasses. This, not this. This is for badasses. Ocarina Time. It's Ocarina Time. I don't know what else I can say. Top rated game on Metacritic still. Got a 99. Only game with a 99. A lot of people will call it the best game of all time. Um, I cannot really play this anymore on N64 or even on NSO. I do have some footage of the ship of Harkinian, ship of Harkonnen, uh, and, uh, ROM that you can get on PC. I think the game looks good like that. I just want a remake. Like, I know a lot of people just want more remakes of Zelda, and Ocarina of Time is one of those. Zelda 2, Oracle Games, Ocarina Majora. Those are the five I want. Um... Still holds up though in terms of a gameplay aspect. I played it twice this year in preparation for Tears of the Kingdom, and uh, yeah, I, there's nothing else to say. It's great. So a sharp person might be able to tell that we have two games left, and they are holy shit. Even the backs of them look the same. Um, very similar. Same engine. Same graphics. Even the same world. Um, Breath of the Wild is or maybe was my favorite game of all time. I feel like I can't even like separate these two at this point. Um, it's pretty obvious that Tears of the Kingdom, if you've played it, is just better than Breath of the Wild. So, I mean, yay, number one, yeah. <laughs> it, does, it just does Breath of the Wild a little bit better. This will, I will still go back to this every now and then and play it. Uh, I got a tattoo of it, it's what made me fall in love with Zelda. It's what made me write a 165-ish page Lord of the Rings style feature-like screenplay of The Legend of Zelda. I'll even show a page just to prove it. You guys can pause and read it, um, which I will. I'll share a little bit of that one day because I've been, I've been talking about that with some of my friends and um, that it just inspired me to, I, I want to make a Zelda movie one day. Like a lot of people don't know, but I, I have a film degree. I've made some short films in my life. I it's usually just like doing YouTube stuff though, but um, this just sparked my imagination in a way that no game has. And I kind of always define myself as like the opposite of Kojima. Kojima says he's like 65% movies, 35% video games, even though he works on video games. That's why his video games are so movie-like. But I want my, you know, movies to be more video game-like, if that makes sense. I don't want any interactivity in my movies or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying, but... I want to adapt video games, starting with The Legend of Zelda. And this is the one that made me want to. I'll never forget booting this up for the first time, but let's be real, this is what it's all about. This is what we were waiting for. It felt like Nintendo knew this game was better right from the beginning, right from that opening. It is absolutely amazing when you encounter Ganondorf, but even more than that, when you jump off that platform in the chamber of awakening and you're just falling and that music kicks in i had like legit a tear in my eye because the music is so it's just like yes this is going to be the best game you've ever played and it's so dumb that i'm just like yeah it's the best like it's stu it, i feel stupid because like this is my favorite game but this one's just better so this is my favorite game of all time it's just math stuff at this point there is a part of me that likes the story more in Breath of the Wild. Now, hold on. I will explain why. Because Zelda Breath of the Wild was, again, my first Zelda game. 
And I had no expectations for what the story was. When I go back and I look at theory videos for Breath of the Wild, people were expecting the fucking craziest shit I have ever heard in my entire life. Because, you know, Skyward Sword was so great with its story, and they were just expecting so much more lore and interconnectivity in the game. That's why I found the story in Tears of the Kingdom not disappointing, but lackluster in, like, the interconnectivity of the entire series. I don't need that. But a lot of the, the discussion about this game with my friends has been, where are the Divine Beast? Where are the Guardians? Was Raru named after Raru from Ocarina of Time? Or was Raru from Ocarina of Time named after the first King of Hyrule? I don't even, like, Zelda, spoilers, you know, if you pay, play, like, 15 hours of the game, not really spoiling anything, but, like, when Zelda goes back in time to the initial start of Hyrule, is that after Skyward Sword, or is Tears of the Kingdom just a reboot of the series? It's very unclear, and that's the one complaint I have about the game, is that the story is so fucking good. Like, it's like a 10 out of 10 story that is completely standalone somehow. It's even standalone from Breath of the Wild. And I would say Breath of the Wild has more interconnectivity with the entire series than Tears of the Kingdom does, because... You know, Breath of the Wild, it, it uh, references the sages, like uh, Medley from Wind Waker and Ruta, uh, or Ruta or whatever her name was, and uh, Darunia from, you know, Ocarina of Time as well. Didn't really focus on the villains as much, but there's things I like more in this game, but there's, I'll say a lot more that I like in this game than this game. Um, but I want to get Breath of the Wild out of the way because I feel like we're going to be talking about Tears of the Kingdom a little bit more. Yes, I get it. It has Divine Beast. The Blight Ganons are not very satisfactory when it comes to the aesthetics and the thematic elements of boss fights. But let's be real. The bosses in this game, Divine Beast-wise, are way harder than the bosses in this game. Colgara, the Goma, like, they are cakewalks. Absolute cakewalks. The only thing you need to beat Colgara is six arrows and six key swings. Um, you don't even really need to land on the ground. I will say, everything else about the bosses, from the presentation, the music, the f they did it again. I mentioned in Spirit Tracks, they they did the, uh, the fucking Dragon Roost Island theme. Also, my favorite track ever in Zelda was presented in Wind Waker. They brought it back here in Tears of the Kingdom when you fight Kolgara with Tulin. Um, that was fucking awesome. That, that, that's the music in Tears of the Kingdom. I feel like a lot of people dogged on Breath of the Wild. I kind of get why the music in Breath of the Wild is the way that it is because the game is so spacey and segmented. Everything is apocalyptic, everything is very calm before the storm type of feel. So, um, the music is very slow and methodical. They fucking killed it with Tears of the Kingdom, though. The music is so good. Like, holy shit. I don't want to. I don't want to rank the Zelda soundtracks. That'd be fucking impossible. Tears, uh, Twilight Princess is the best, and then it's like Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, A Link to the Past, Majora's Mask, Tears of the Kingdom, uh, Original Zelda, Skyward Sword, and Wind Waker are all tied for second, and Spirit Tracks are all tied for second. I feel like I can't separate these two just because they feel so similar. I'm not gonna lie to you. As much as I love Tears of the Kingdom. I was getting a little bit burnt out on it because I put like 140 hours into it over the past two weeks. That is 10 hours a day. Holy shit. Sorry, guys. Um, and I didn't get burnt on, out on it because I wasn't enjoying it. There was a moment where I was playing this game. I was running around in Akala, kind of around Terrytown, and I was like, man, I can't believe I've been playing this game for so many years. This is a fucking new game. What was I even talking about? It just looks and feels so much like Breath of the Wild that I thought I was playing Breath of the Wild. And I'm not saying this is a DLC, which an argument could be made that this is a $70 DLC. A, a DLC that is worth $70, though. Um, but they added the entire, like, depths where you jump through the chasms and the little jingle with the horn that plays when you jump into the chasms. Holy shit, the Sky Islands um, don't have as much variety. They very much so remind me of the islands from Wind Waker, which is a good thing because I like the islands in Wind Waker a lot more than I like the islands in Skyward Sword. So that's really good. You collect Sage's Wills, you collect old maps. They put the old skins from Breath of the Wild Amiibos into this game where you don't really need the Amiibos. The Amiibos are more used for paragliders, which I really like. I really like customizing the paragliders. It's just everything that worked about Breath of the Wild is in Tears of the Kingdom. They just tweak it to be a little bit better. Um, so it's just math stuff at this point. This game's a little bit better. Of course, it's number one. If you don't like 
the open air style Zelda, though, I totally understand why these two games don't work for you. This is not, if you haven't played Tears of the Kingdom because you didn't like Breath of the Wild, this is not going to, uh, depending on what you didn't like about Breath of the Wild, this is not going to fix anything. It's still just as open air. The dungeons, while themed and while actual dungeons slash temples, are kind of just divine beasts that are themed. There's no keys. You don't get stuck in a single room where you got to figure out a puzzle to get out. It's just segmented shrines at that point, and you got to solve them. Also, people are saying that the puzzles in this game are a lot better. True, but if you have a really good imagination or ADHD, you should be able to get through every shrine within five minutes. I can count on my fingers the amount of shrines that took me more than five minutes. I cannot say the same for Breath of the Wild. There were some shrines in here that really stunted me. Because they kind of restricted you in the freedom of solving puzzles. There were still multiple ways you could solve every shrine. But here, you can just build some bullshit and get through everything. Like, I, like, I am speedrunning this game. I hundred like I almost done every single shrine. I've done like 110 of these things. And I haven't like been seeking them out. I've just been, you know, doing them. And they take me like three or four minutes each. Um, they're not simple. They're just... If you have a good imagination, you're just going to fly through them. I saw somebody say that... You know they can't get through the game because the puzzles are too hard i'm like what the fuck are you talking about like i was listening to i think it was reddit Oscar's podcast and they were talking about the fire temple and how it's intended to be played it's intended to be uh solved a certain way and if you solve it in the intended way it's a it's quite a hard temple to get through um but if you can just bullshit it with the abilities that you got which with ultra hand with ascend just climbing with, uh, you know, you also have auto hand. You can just solve the whole thing in like 20 minutes. And that's awesome. And that, I feel like that is also how it's intended to be played. There's like a thousand ways you can do every puzzle. But that's kind of low key. Not the thing holding this game back. But it's the thing that makes it even further from what people have been asking for. Which is traditional Zelda dungeons. So if that's what you're looking for, these are not, do not listen to the people that are saying traditional Zelda dungeons. These are not traditional Zelda dungeons. They're enjoyable. They're a lot of fun. Best game of all time. <laughs> but they're not, they're not a uh, traditional Zelda dungeons by any means. Like do not go in thinking that. The final boss fight is awesome. I was really happy. I do love the final boss fight, but this is also, again, first Zelda game. So I, my expectations were nowhere. They kind of do the opposite of Breath of the Wild where like, oh, we have all of our teammates here. Yeah, half of Ganon health spar down. Um, Ganondorf is quite strong. Not the hardest boss in the game. I feel like maybe a King Gliok at a very low level might give you a run for your money, but um, Ganondorf was great. Still really great compared to uh, Calamity Ganon. Um, just, yeah, I feel like I'm not hyping it up enough. And I feel like I complained a lot, but my complaints are from... I don't mind the freedom. I actually like the freedom. That's why I really like A Link Between Worlds. That's why Breath of the Wild, I have a fucking tattoo of it. I love the game. It's what got me into Zelda. Don't take this as I want a traditional Zelda. I would not be opposed for Nintendo to go back to the old Zelda formula for like a game or two. I know they said they're going to keep open air formula, but I know they have uh, teams. They have Grezzo, the people that do the 2D games. I'm expecting another 2D. If we don't get another 2D Zelda, I'm going to freaking riot. Because I don't feel like waiting another six years for Zelda. I'm going to be past 30 by the time we get our next mainline 3D Zelda. Um, but yeah, that's the list. Uh, yell at me in the comments. I feel like I'm right, but it's just because it's my list. But let me know what your list is, or at least the Zelda games that you've played. Yes, I like Twilight Princess, okay? I, do, I don't dislike the game. I just like the other games better. Think about it this way. Before Tears of the Kingdom came out, it was at number eight. So that's pretty good, right? No, that's not very good. Um, yeah, but this is the best one. My favorite game, probably, of all time. If not, then this game. Um, I like them, I think, a little bit closer than most people. Uh, but yeah, alrighty. I talk for forever. I'm losing my voice. Yay. Okay, thank you for watching. If you did watch, I don't want the video to end because then I have to stop talking about Zelda. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, we're going to have more Zelda content out. We have a trivia where Neko and Meryl 
duke it out because they're both the Zelda noobs between us four. And holy shit. Wait, is it two o'clock? Holy fuck. Okay, I'm ending the video. Bye.